lots of different roles here. He has IGTA, Dr. Mike, Nurse Mike, and Farmer Mike. <laughs> and one of, the things, huh? one of the things that I really enjoy doing is growing wheatgrass. Thank goodness for you too. Growing wheatgrass. Wheatgrass. Growing. Yeah. 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 I learned how to grow wheatgrass because of YouTube. I went on YouTube and decided, okay, there has to be lots of people who know how to do this. So figured it out, very easy, great, easy way to do it. And then just hopped online and got a wheatgrass juicer. Um, we do lots of wheatgrass, um, lots of green leafy vegetables, and a lot of ginger. So, and there is of course a lot of teas, lots of water. You know, Joseph said he drank at least a gallon of fluid every day, just flushing it out. Wow. You were know. a lot. <laughs> oh yeah. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. <laughs> so, and this all helps with internal cleansing. Really flushing it out, like give it out. We had. Uh, we had a huge support group here at San Miguel that uh, would also help us manifest his great help. And that is we wanted people to visualize water. Lots of water. Flowing yeah. water. Yeah. Yeah. And that would be like just pushing all of this out. Uh, at one time at the Life Path Center, there was a meditation. This is the day that you started to be therapy. And um, there was 60 people. Yeah. There was about 60 people at the time. It was a, a specific time. It was a seven o'clock um, here, and it was really about making the power of intention work. And so we had about 60 people here. We had people all over the U.S. We had people all the way from New Zealand. You know, and it was really about focusing and having the intention of flushing and cleaning and work. And then your favorite. Joseph did this great thing. Where my parents live, there's a nature walk that goes around their house. And Joseph walked it every day. It was 1.75 miles, at least after somebody in the house made it said. Um, rain, chai, rain, or Shine. Shine. Thank you. Watch shine. Or <laughs> shine. Or cold. Uh -huh. Or hot. He walks. Yeah, because the lymphatic thing, the major thing about cancers is know your type of cancer. What organ or what system it's, you know, it's affecting. With the lymphatic system, it's all about needing to move. So, he did lots of walking. Uh, even on the days you don't necessarily feel that great, he still walked. He even started getting hand weights and walking around and you know, using hand weight while he was walking them, you know, it was basically extending like the lymphatic system even further. Is this here in San Miguel? No, we were in Texas. San Antonio, Texas. Yeah, so this is a real combination of things. It's really about, you know, it's like really the whole the mind, the body, the spirit. You know, it's about chemistry. You know, and it's also about attention. Can I ask a question? I've heard recently that B7T is really uh, helpful in Africa and Sea. Is that? Do you say B7T, sir, for cancer? You know, when I was researching all of this, I came across a whole bunch of mixed messages. And without having the time to test them, I decided to eliminate them. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's not beneficial. I was just in a crunching area and I was like, okay. Did you entertain raw? We did a lot of raw. But not 100%. Not 100%. And after studying with Purcell and, and seeing the positive effects of that, why why did you switch to the vegan from what you were doing? I assume you were doing that's, that previously. That's a very good question. And I think Mike can, can address that. Yeah. Um, the main reason is we wanted to change the chemistry in our bodies. Really fast. More alkaline. Huh? Did it switch to more alkaline? Yeah, definitely more alkaline. Yeah, yeah, but you know, we did some research, Mike did some research about this. Uh, Dr. Gonzalez is a very famous uh, alternative cancer 
Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, you know. Him, yeah. Yeah, it's like he's up in New York. Yeah. Wonderful guy. And uh, he works with cancer almost exclusively with dying. And, and people will come to him and say, I've got this kind of cancer. And he'll say, what are you eating? And he'll have them eat the opposite. So he, he may get vegans who go come to him. And he'll have cancer. And he'll, he'll have prescribed that the they eat meat. Because it's about changing the environment, the chemical environment in the body. And that's what we were desperate to do. Because we didn't have much time. You see, I was about apparently 10 days to two weeks away from the cancer going to my liver, which really would have been a terrible problem because my liver was already compromised by uh, hepatitis B that I had contracted years earlier here in San Miguel. In some, we still don't know how, but, and so they were very concerned. In fact, the first, my first round of chemo I had to do in the hospital because they wanted to monitor what was going to happen to my liver all during that time. And that, it was very interesting because in the, the second day of being in the hospital, which I felt like was being imprisoned by the, you know, the Spanish Inquisition or something, I mean, I'd never been in a hospital, except to visit other people. And um, they told me, I said, well, they brought my tray, you know, and it's just all this food, like chicken fried steak and mashed potatoes the worst and uh, chocolate yeah. cake for dessert. Oh, really. oh, and, so, and I asked yes. my guy, I said, what the heck is going on? He said, well, do you feel hungry? Yeah. Of course, they had me on prednisone, which is steroid. So, of course, I was eating cardboard. You know, I mean, I'd eat anything. I'd eat yeah. the tray. I was so hungry. So we found out, called down there, and said, oh, no, well, Mr. Dispenza is on an unrestricted diet, according to his doctor. Well, you know, it's just like, how, how can you do that? It's sinful to put a cancer patient on an unrestricted diet without, we thought. And this, yeah, this most really. Most medical people don't know anything about this. Exactly. Patients, so. This really spurred him into, hey, we've got to do something about it. Diet, supplements, all this stuff. Now, Mike, can I ask one other question? You mentioned those pancreatic enzymes, and you said they break down the sugar coating on the cancer cells. Yeah. But I'm just questioning the mechanism of that, because once pancreatic enzymes, I thought, were in the stomach, and then they're broken down, are they not broken down in the stomach? Are they assimilated, or are they absorbed fully, and then they go in on a cellular level, or? Well, what happens is they do break down. They break down, but they don't break down completely. So that becomes the benefit. So that means I can eat sugar and take these pancreatic enzymes and be happy? <laughs> that's the reason for my question. <laughs> that's kind of like when, when they did Joseph the prednisone and he was getting really amped up. If you've ever been around somebody who's, who really enjoys either a lot of caffeine or illegal speed. It's like speed. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And you know, I could start seeing behavior like that with Joseph, and I'm like, no way. So I've become his nurse, his drug dealer, and it's like, no, you're not taking this anymore. <laughs> you know? It's like, let's regulate this. But what his doctor wanted to do was, he said, oh no, he has to be on that, and then we'll give him a downer. We, anybody who knows anything about drugs, you don't mix uppers and downers together. You know, that's just a recipe of disaster. But this is what they were doing. So when you said you take the pancreatic enzymes and then eat a bunch of sugar, technically, yes, you could, but that's the thing. No, that was just, I was just kidding. But I was curious. She's a doctor. She's I was curious to about. Tell her she can eat sugar. <laughs> I just was curious about the mechanism, though. How, if those are broken down, how are they affecting that sugar coating on the cancer cells? The cool thing is they don't break down completely. And this is the reason why they're. And these are any pancreatic enzymes, or are they? Yeah, well, it's pancreatic X, what is it? It's X6. Make sure we have the power, power to the sixth degree. It's, it's, yeah, that's the, the strength that you're looking for. So, but they have an animal enzyme. It's an animal enzyme. And this is the animal oh, enzyme. This is the, the extract from, it's from pig. From oh, it is from pig. Yeah, but it's, a, it's the animal enzyme, and it's not the f uh, fruit. Okay. okay. So it works differently. And you can buy those? Oh, yeah. Okay. They talked a lot about physical aspects. You know, everything about the emotions. 
Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and take another hour and a half. Yeah, there, there is a lot, and just very briefly, uh, and, I, and I'm going through this right now, there's a, there's a post-chemo depression. Uh, another thing that they don't Also a post-prednisone depression. I'm sorry. Sure, post-prednisone depression. <laughs> yeah, and there's, there's a post-cancer post depression. There's a post-chemo depression. Sure. But I have to be very careful about that. And there, but there are ways of dealing with that. It's, uh, uh, we, we do, we're trying to deal with that on, on the physical level and the emotional level and the spiritual level. So that I have people who I talk to and Mike gives me magnesium citrate, which is a miracle thing for, for uh, 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 depression. Really quite wonderful. And uh, little by little, I'm, I'm getting out of that. But it does take its toll emotionally. Uh, cancer does and 